now that we have a feel for just the names of locations, the previous slide just kind of did towns on a map. That's all we did. We named locations. Um, let's understand what this yellow outline is over on the right hand side. Um, so before we even get started, let's orient ourselves. Here would be posterior, and we know that that is also called dorsal. Down here is the anterior median fissure, and I know that that is anterior because it's a wider gap than the posterior median sulcus, but I also know that this is called ventral or belly. I know that I have cut the spinal cord here and I'm looking top down, a superficial view. I know that I've done the same here and I'm only looking at the vertebral column, a superficial view. Before we get started, I want you to know that the dura mater that surrounds the spinal cord, right? It's, it surrounds it with the other two maters in between. The dura mater is continuous with the epineurium. And that's what I'm drawing for you here. The dura mater extends and becomes one with the epineurium. So it's important to realize that because if you think about the extent of that, it means that everything in the nervous system is isolated from every other tissue because it surrounds the spinal cord and is continuous with the surrounding of nerves. I want to look at this vertebra up here, which is a thoracic vertebra, so I guess I made the cut in the wrong place. It's going to annoy me. Um, so I guess this is more of a cut like right here. Um, but I wanted to draw this vertebra because I wanted you to see that the spinal cord is very small within this vertebral foramen. What is also present, and I'll draw these in black, is nerves coming off of the spinal cord, and then a spinal nerve that leaves the protective covering of the bone. So there are neurons that come off the spinal cord and then leave the protective covering of the bone. And then they branch off and go to different places in the body. However, this little tiny thing right here is called a spinal nerve. Usually students read chapter 13 and you're like, they keep referring to these spinal nerves. Where the heck are the spinal nerves? They're very tiny. And if you were to dissect someone's entire vertebral column, spinal cord and bone together, you would only see like the nubs of a spinal nerve. So I want to make it clear right here. Oops, let me do that in red. I wanna make it clear that this structure right here is a spinal nerve. So number one is the spinal nerve. So what you're seeing is everything to the left of it is pretty much secluded in the bone. Everything to the right of it is now the peripheral nervous system. It is now outside of the spinal cord and outside of that spinal nerve. So once something gets lateral to a spinal nerve, let's put that lateral, medial. Once something gets lateral to a spinal nerve, the information, the neuron itself, is now part of the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so let's label some passageways. And what I want to do first is I, I want to draw a tactile receptor. I don't know if you remember the laminated corpuscles. They had this like structure like this to them. We looked at them in skin. And this might be in your arm somewhere, but the neuron that's attached to it comes in to your spinal cord like this. That neuron is a sensory neuron. And let's draw some arrows on it. To remember this, it is carrying information in to the spinal cord. This neuron is also called unipolar. That is a word that refers to its shape. And what that means for us here, it means that the cell body is right here in this enlargement. 
Okay, so this is a sensory neuron. It's unipolar and its cell body is right here. Okay, all right. Let's also draw a motor neuron. And we know that a motor neuron would be carrying information out through the spinal nerve and out this way. And that a motor neuron, it could be um, smooth muscle or cardiac, but let's make it skeletal muscle. And what we have here is the neuromuscular junction. So this neuron is carrying information that is going out of the spinal cord, descending, going out maybe the sciatic nerve and descending down to the rectus femoris or something like that. All right, let's name these passageways. Let's name these. So number number two, right here, number two is called the something. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what is called the dorsal ramus. Ramus just means conduit. It's dorsal because it's toward the posterior side of the spinal cord. We named the spinal nerve. This um, like big zit that's here in the passageway, this expansion, this is number three, and this is called the dorsal root ganglion. A ganglia, a ganglion, singular, ganglia, plural. And we can abbreviate this, DRG. If you use DRG, I will know what you mean. If I use DRG, you will know what I mean. There's this last little part right here, and we'll make that number four. And this is what's called the dorsal root. Notice how the ramus is lateral to the spinal nerve, and the root is medial to the spinal nerve. I'll repeat that, just let's move on to the other side, but I will repeat that. This number here, this little um, conduit right here, we're gonna make this number five. And this is what's going to be the ventral root because it is medial to the spinal nerve. I don't have a ganglion on the ventral root, I don't. That's another way that you can get a picture like this and know immediately what is posterior and what is anterior because the posterior side has this dorsal root ganglion. Okay, so what I do have here though is another conduit that we're gonna call number six and that's going to be the ventral ramus. So I just wanna highlight for a moment in a very strange way. But uh, what I'm going to do is highlight in light blue the ramuses, right? A ramus is lateral to the spinal nerve. And what I also want to do to you, for you is highlight in pink everything that is associated with a root, which is medial to the spinal nerve. So notice how knowing these directions is incredibly helpful for you to realize not only the root of information, root being R-O-U-T-E, um, but also to realize what is protected in the bone of the spinal cord, spinal column, and what isn't. If I were to draw the surrounding bone, if I wanted to draw this surrounding bone here, it would be something like this. It would be like right there. That would be all the bony protection. Anything outside of this doesn't have bony protection. So let's label that bony protection. This is basically that cavity I just drew. This is the vertebral foramen. That's the opening up here. There are four other things that I want to draw and then we'll move on to some other pictures and kind of um, put the whole thing together. Um, but let's label some of these other things. What color do you want them? What color would be festive? Green? We'll do green. <laughs> what I would like to label here are synapses. 
They're synapses that are in gray matter. So looking at this word, what I'm going to label are places where a neuron's axon terminals meet with the cell body of another neuron. As you can see, there's four colors here, and we're going to label these 7, 8, 9, and 10. So these are gray matter synapses, and if two neurons synapse in space number 7, that would mean that their synapse, let's just name these, just work with me here. 7 is somatic sensory. I know you're like, what does that mean? Just, just bear with me. Area eight, we're going to refer to as visceral sensory. So somatic sensory means skin and muscles. Anything, any information incoming from skin and muscles, like from this neuron here. Visceral would be any information coming in from your guts. Number nine is going to be visceral motor. So any information that needs to go out to your guts would come from space number nine. And number 10 is called somatic motor. Any information going to the neuromuscular junction. All right. I did say, <coughs> I said here that this is a tactile sensory receptor over here on the right. That is most likely a receptor that is in your hand. So the information it carries is from your somatic system. And therefore, when this orange neuron, let's highlight the pathway, when an action potential is stimulated and this orange neuron sends an action potential along this route, this action potential will actually end, the neuron will end right here in number seven because information that's incoming ends right there in the somatic sensory area. Now, a couple things could happen at this point, but what we're going to say is that there is a neuron in your spinal column that is making a decision. And, and this neuron here, we, we haven't talked about these yet, I don't believe. This neuron here is going to be an interneuron. It is neither sensory nor motor. What it does is make decisions. It says, thank you for the incoming information. I believe that this is the appropriate output. And so this sensory neuron came in with information from your hand that you were feeling something. And what it does is communicate with an outgoing neuron, which is going to connect to this one right here. And so let me highlight that for us as well. The outgoing neuron is going to send an action potential out all the way to the neuromuscular junction of a muscle in your hand and cause some kind of muscle contraction. Let's just leave this right here because what this picture does is it gives us a lot of the terminology, right? Again, what we've drawn is really just an anatomy map. So let's look at some other pathways to help us understand those gray matter areas, the, the gray matter synapses.